Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas. This is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 24. So this episode is going to be the last one where we take a little break from our mechanics to create uh, some fun things. And what we're going to look at this episode is we'll look at a splash screen, we'll look at uh, fade screens and we'll do a little bit more on our environment because next episode we're going to focus a little bit more on some more cool mechanics. So firstly, what we'll do is let's create ourselves a simple splash screen. So a splash screen is something that displays, for example, your game studio or the publisher or whatever. And to do that, we can do it in a fairly simple way. And we'll go to File, New Scene. And I want to keep it as simple as possible, but you can go as detailed or as complex as you like. There's no limit to what you can do in this bit, but I'll show you the basics of how you can do it. So I want to go game object, UI, and I'm just going to have a completely black screen. So I want to have a raw image, change it to black on the color. And I'm going to stretch, so anchor position, stretch. Left, zero, top, zero, right, zero, bottom, zero. So if I double click the raw image, it covers the entire screen. Perfect. Next thing I want to do is put another raw image on top of that with a, a logo on. And what I'll do is I'll go to my textures folder and I'm going to drag and drop Jimmy Vegas Game Studios logo into here. So you've got your own logo. You can use that one, but I'll put this on the website anyway, just in case you guys want to use it for whatever reason. I don't know, but you probably should have your own logo. If not, create one in Photoshop. Be a bit of fun. So game object, UI. Raw image again, and we're going to anchor this one in center, which is fine. Zero out my position. Zoom in, and I'm just going to drag and drop this image onto the texture. It's right there, nice and simple. Then it's just a case of stretching and getting it to the right size of how you want it to be. So let me press play. That's okay. I think this needs to be a bit bigger. There we go. Okay, so mine's dead center now. So what I'll do is I'll create a cool little script which will take us to our next scene. But before we do, we firstly need to go to File, Build Settings, and we'll need to go to Add Open Scenes. Obviously, we need to save the scene, so we'll save it as Splash Screen. And I'm going to move this up here to zero. So the reason we do this is because when we build the game using these buttons here, which we will do later on, um, it always brings up scene zero as the very first scene, uh, scene to play. So in this case, we want our splash screen to display as the first scene. Then after that, if you've got more splash screens, you would want that, but it doesn't matter too much about what order we have things here because we can always change them later on. We just have to make sure that our script relate to the correct scenes. So because we've moved some scenes around, we may need to just check a couple of things. So what we'll do is let's go to our assets folder where our scenes are. Let's go to uh, main menu. So remember, we need to check if these buttons still work correctly. So we need to go to menu options here and we'll go into the script and just double check that nothing has been messed around with too much. I suspect we may need to change a few things, but we will see. So if we open this up in Mono Develop or, Unit or Visual Studio, and we can see scene manager.load scene to play game says scene zero. We just need to change that to whatever level 001 is, which is now one. So we change that to a one and save. And credit scene, it says number two. So that needs to become, in fact, we'll, we can just move that up to there. So it still stays as number two. Next thing we need to do is quickly check our game over script. So if we go to, um, our, it should be in our scripts folder, isn't it? And I'm trying to remember which script it is. I think it's health monitor, isn't it? So if we go to health monitor, and, um, oh gosh, let me quickly have a look here. I don't think it is. There should be another script somewhere which loads up a scene. Um, well, that's the one we've just been in. 
global health I think it may be it is it's global health that was the one we um originally put our game over scene to be loaded into sorry mono developers just had a bit of a spaz out there okay so let's try that again so our game over scene is in number three now so we need to change scene manager dot load scene to number three and save so there's going to be a couple of things that you may need to go through but don't worry too much about uh, what's going to happen because at the end of the day you can always modify different scenes and there's different ways of doing it anyway so let's head back to um, our splash screen right there so let's create that script which takes us to our uh, main menu after a certain amount of time and the way we're going to do this is very similar to what we've got here so although we have global health technically we can use a couple of things from this particular script which will help us in the future so if we go to our scripts folder right click create c sharp script and we will do what should we call this splash to menu so if we open up in mono develop or visual studio uh, we'll get rid of void update because we don't need that at the very top we need to put using unity engine dot scene management and let's get rid of that there the note so the way this is going to work is when we have uh, this script start we need to wait for a certain amount of time and let's say that time is five seconds but because we're waiting we're going to need to use an i enumerator so i enumerator let's call this splash finish uh, open close bracket open curly bracket down a couple of lines and close curly bracket and we'll put yield return new wait for seconds and i'm going to put five and a half seconds i think so 5.5 f close curly bracket semicolon and if you remember it's scene manager dot load scene and in brackets whatever the scene is so the same really applies here again scene manager dot load scene and in brackets we need to go to main menu which is number four so we put number four in there semicolon the last thing we need to do is in void start start co routine and in brackets splash finish open close bracket close bracket semicolon and save so basically all that's happening here is when this script starts running it will instantly start our i enumerator it will wait for five and a half seconds and then it'll boot straight to the menu so let's give this a go game object create empty and just drag and drop splash to menu onto that game object i'm not going to bother renaming it it's not too important in this scene save and let's press play so hopefully after five and a half seconds excellent okay so then play game and we're in our game so obviously if you have more splash screens you would uh, have a script to move on to the next one and then it'd move on to the next one then to your menu or whatever but that's the principle of how this works it's pretty easy when you get used to it so next thing we'll do let's go to our main scene level 001 and let's create ourselves a fading screen so when we start the game let's have the scene fade in from black so to do that what i'm going to do actually is um double click on fps controller to get us zoomed in on the scene a little more and let's go to game object ui raw image i'm going to right click and rename and i'll call it fade screen in and what we'll do is we'll go to our animations folder firstly we'll change it to black or whatever color you want the scene to start out at so if you want it to start as a completely white screen you have it white if you want black red blue whichever so let's set it to black and i'm going to stretch it and zero all the positions so it covers the screen entirely so if we double click 
There we go. So we need to add the animation. So let's go to animation, create, and let's call it fade screen in and save. And if you are in um, Unit, an early version of Unity 5, you can probably just go ahead and carry on now. If you're in Unity 5.5 and above, which includes Unity 2017, 2018, 2019, all the year ones, then you'll need to press the record button first. And it should turn this red up here. That means you're in recording. So let's go to uh, frame zero. Hit enter just to make sure we are there. And what we'll do is we'll go to color. And we will manually type here in the alpha 255 and hit enter. And then we can press X. And what I want to happen is over the course of, let's say, two seconds, our scene fades in. So that will be frame 120 because we're using 60 frames a second. And at frame 120, we want the alpha to be zero. So hit zero. Hit enter, press X, press the record, and that's our simple animation done. So what we need to do now is remove animator from there. So right click, remove component, and then add component. And you can do what I've done here, type in anim, put our animation on there. You know, we've worked with animation before, so it's not, I'm not gonna explain too much about what's going on, but let's drag and drop fade screen onto the animation clip, change the size to one, and add fade screen to element zero there. And uh, we'll keep play automatically ticked, but what we'll need to do is change it to legacy. So if you click the animation, click the menu up here, click on debug, and then tick legacy, and set ourselves back to normal, and change it to once. So what should happen now when we press play, is we should see a fade. There we go. So you can see that a fade screen works fairly easy and the, the inverse works exactly the same as well. So you could have another object which just has um, has an alpha of zero and then of course over two seconds you change the alpha to 255 and that would obviously make it go from completely visible to completely opaque. So Face screen is something a lot of people want to use, but some people believe it can be a little bit difficult, but it really isn't. It's as easy as that with the fade screen. So I'm going to save that scene there. And what I'm going to do is go to splash screen. So the whole principle, you could envisage now how the player would be seeing the game itself. So if you could imagine you were the player and you booted up your game for the first time, this is what everyone's going to see now. So you would have splash screen. Great. Move on to the menu. Oh, play game. And it fades into the game. So it's the process of moving along, which we've been looking at here. And it's starting to come together a bit more like a game would, not just jumping from one thing to another. There's more information provided, especially with the splash screen. So the last thing we'll do in level 001, I'm going to double click my FPS controller again to zoom in. And let's add a couple more things just to make the game look a bit more entertaining to give us a world that we can play around in next time. So I'm going to go to my objects folder here and I'm going to bring in this rocks folder. And these are just simply some uh, rock objects to kind of match what we have here for the mountains to give you a bit more flexibility. So you can see here a nice rock has been brought into the scene. And if we go here, there's a couple of prefabs that you can use just to make things look however you would want it to be. And obviously you can modify these as you need to. You can go to the um, texture files, play around with them, create from grayscale. Um, it's, you know, it really is entirely up to you how you want to deal with things. Um, but these are just here to kind of give you a bit more of a basis on playing around with them. So I'm going to leave this episode here for now. Next episode, what we're going to do, as I said earlier, we are going to add in some blood to our zombie. So when we shoot our zombie, we'll have some blood spurt out and we'll look at um, creating headshots as well.
So at the moment, it doesn't really matter where on our zombie you shoot him, he will die. So what I want to do, if we can find him over here, is I want to get to a point where if we shoot his head, well, it would take more health off him, so he would die quicker. So we need to differentiate between the body and the head, and that's what we'll get around to in the next episode. So guys, until then, thank you very much for watching.